Good morning, Good morning and welcome to the Gateway to College presentation. We're very pleased and honored to be able to present our program uh, today. As uh, he mentioned, we're the Gateway to College program and we're located on the Brooklyn Park campus of Hennepin Technical College. And really the program is a national network. We're one of, we're one, no, one of 42 schools, uh, locations in, in the United States. And uh, we started about 18 months ago. We had our first graduating class last May. And so we're still kind of in the growth stage. And this recently, I think this month or last month, St. Paul School District also came on board with the Gateway to College Network. We want to introduce, we have a privilege of having our uh, program manager from the Gateway to College National Network, Chris Barnum. Hi, Chris. Please welcome her. Chris is from Portland, Oregon, not quite used to our weather yet. <laughs> we are neither. I know. <laughs> a little bit about what the Gateway to College program is all about. Uh, it's really about empowering the youth who have either dropped out of school or are on the verge of dropping out or not on track to graduate. So we all know there's a percentage of students in our high schools that are not really on track to graduate. They're kind of going through the motions sometimes of being in school. Uh, and we're also designed to help the students not only earn that high school diploma, because we all know that's very important, but also to begin earning dual credits or college credits. So all of our students when they start in the program will begin to earn uh, college credits in an HTC college class. And it's really in a, sort, in a supportive environment. I, I think the speaker this morning addressed that very well. Uh, it's not only navigating, you know, how do you apply and fill out the FAFSA forms, but having that person there as a cheerleader. Think back when you were in college. You know, did you ever have that time when you had four finals set, scheduled on the same day or the same week and you needed somebody kind of in your corner to say, you can do this, we know you can do this. And so that's that supportive environment and kind of that cheerleading role that the Gateway to College program can provide for students. So a little big picture about how Gateway to College works. Um, I'll talk about the application a little bit later in our presentation. Um, but once students come on board with us, um, they spend the first semester in what's called the foundation. And during that semester, they take a college success class. They take developmental ed courses, which will start second semester. Um, through the legislation that was passed last May to allow our students in early college readiness programs to access developmental ed courses. And then after first semester we look at what their credit needs are, we look at what their career interests are and how they've done during that foundation and that will determine um, what their schedule would look like second semester. So we could have students um, with us up to one year to three years and when they graduate our goal is that they graduate and they go on to post-secondary so they have high school classes and college cl classes. One thing I do want to mention because we are located in the Hennepin Technical College, Hennepin Tech does not expect our students to stay at Hennepin Tech. They would love it if they do. Um, but the important thing is, is they're looking at our students and what their dreams are. And we'll talk a little bit about our graduating class last May in a few minutes. Uh, one of the things that, that we're very fortunate to have is a very strong working relationship with Hennepin Technical College. And I would say that relationship between Intermediate District 287 and, and HTC really goes back about 40 years. We have always had high school students on the college campuses of Hennepin Tech. Generally, they've been enrolled in career tech programs where they come out for two hours a day and get back on the bus and go back to their home school. So this, with the uh, evolution then, it was just natural for us to start developing the early college or the middle college concept so that the students can not only take the career tech classes, but now they can take the high school classes as well on the college campus. It's really, I, I think, a true partnership. Uh, we, the HTC provided us with classrooms, with offices, with college success instructors, so our students all enroll in the college uh, success class with an HTC professor. They all take the AccuPlacer testing. They don't have to pay the $20 or the $10, what is the normal fee. Uh, we get free HTC planners, we have IT, we have marketing. Our students participate in the college activities. And there again, I think it kind of reflecting upon what we heard this morning. It's the students really beginning to see themselves and having that expectation, I'm a college student, I can do this, kind of that mindset that they need. 
And then with 287, and that's who employs me as District 287, we have professional learning communities, very common on the K-12 side. And this year, one of our goals for the, our professional learning community in Gateway is to work on Accuplacer vocabulary. If you've ever taken that Accuplacer, it is hard. Some of those words on there, I needed to look up to find out what they were. So that's one of our goals this year. We also have an EL instructor as needed. We have special education services. We have marketing and high school instructors as well as student information systems. On the K-12 side, we have to do the attendance, the MARS reporting, so we also have that system as well. One of the things we, we found out early on as we were designing the program is we needed a leadership team. We needed to bring those people to the table who could make decisions. Oftentimes you get people at the table, they talk about the problem, they talk about the problem, I'll go back and talk to my supervisor, my supervisor, and that just slows down the process. So we knew we needed the decision makers at the table right away. So we have the vice president of, the, of Hennepin Tech at the table, we have the executive director of teaching and learning for 287 at the table, and those are the two decision makers from the college side as well as 287. Then we have the operational team, Ann and myself, kind of doing the day-to-day. -day. This is what's happening. These are the obstacles we've identified. How can we solve this problem so we can move on? As well as communications and our support staff. Um, also, um, it's nice to be able to access both 287 services and Hennepin Tech if there are some needs that arise and to be able to work with both Rose and then Dara Hagen, who's my supervisor on the college side, um, just to support whatever the needs are in the program. Also, um, Hennepin Techno College President C uh, Cecilia Cervantes is very much for this program. She was a participant with this program um, and had one at the college that she worked at in California. So Gateway is really about how can we change the educational experience for our students. And so I, I will be very honest with you, we don't cream our students. We don't, we look at the best of the best is. Um, we have an application process that students have to follow. Um, but these are all students who are very much at risk. These are students who have dropped out. These are students who didn't graduate and um, they're supposed to graduate last year. These are students who, I, as I found out later, have a whole array of um, issues that they're coming to the table with, whether that was mental health or whether it was chemical health or the fact that there was um, physical violence in the schools they were at before. I don't always know that coming into it with students. And so what we try to do is we try to uh, offer some innovative instructional strategies. Um, we, uh, half the staff are trained in AVID, AVID strategies, if you're familiar with that. Uh, collaborating with the faculty, um, providing a college environment. Our students came to our program and they said, I do not want to be in a, I want a drama-free environment. Um, there was fighting going on in my school, there was bullying, this and that, and a lot of my students have been bullied, um, and they have very sad stories to, to share. And so we provide that support for them on the college, that we are drama-free, they're in a college environment. We provide wraparound holistic student support, whether that's through our resource specialist, our social worker. This fall, all of a sudden, there were a lot of mental health needs that came up, and I'm like, whoa, this is beyond me, and I was trained as a counselor. And I said, I need some support, and 287 came through right away and said, we'll get you a social worker four hours a week. We had a social work intern in my mind. I was thinking that was going to be okay. That definitely wasn't enough. <laughs> um, and so we need a little bit more um, with that. And then curriculum that meets high school standards while also earning college credit. As I mentioned, the resource specialist, that's part of the gateway to college model. So if you think of your social worker and your counselor, it's a combination of both those. The resource specialist is the person that um, is a Hennepin Technical College hire. And she is the person who sits down with the students, reviews their transcripts and credits, sets goals with them, checks in with them um, every week or every two weeks. She also supports the college success class by meeting with the instructor, making sure the students are doing what they need to be doing, and then helping those students enroll in college classes. We also use the college advisors on Hennepin Technical College campus. And then just um, peer tutoring and accessing um, other support services on the college. And then kind of the fun part about it, if we all remember that, is the student life and being a college student. And it's really hard. The students kind of want to be in their own little niche on the campus, and we try to get them out 
getting exposed to the different opportunities that um, Hennepin Tech has to offer. So students all get an ID and they take such pride when they get that Hennepin Tech ID. They're like, I'm a college student. I said, once you start that first day of school, you are a college student. You're in college success class, that's your first college class, and you have an ID that gives you access to a lot of things, along with a lot of responsibilities, as I remind them. Um, so they've accessed the library, the computer lab. Um, Hennepin Tech is open till nine o'clock, Monday through Friday, and then also Saturday, so our students can access the uh, uh, computer lab and other things like that, study space. Tutors, they have access to tutoring that goes on all day and then some evenings. Uh, being part of the student senate if they'd like. And then we're right, so we are housed right next to the veterans group. And it's really pretty cool because um, our students, we thought our students would be the loud ones. It's a veterans office, it's very, very loud. We're like, what's going on? And I'm like, I got testing in my office today. Um, but our students love going in there, whether it's to say good morning, they'll offer them coffee. Um, they'll talk about you know, their experiences as a veteran and what they experienced. And then also having them, they have a large TV in there. If our students want to go in there and sit and just kind of talk about sports and things like that, they really have joined um, and welcomed Gateway to College um, as part of being a part of that campus. We also celebrate diversity and a variety of other activities that are happening on the college campus. This is a picture from the diversity celebration that they had last spring. They had a lot of food which students really enjoyed that piece of it. Student Success Day, our students all take part in that and different activities that they can. Uh, the Career Fair, so our students have a resume so they can apply for jobs at the Career Fair. HGC Pride Days, Welcome Week. And then access any other college programs once they graduate like TRIO. So our enrollment process, um, <clears throat> I went to Portland, both Rose and I, to be trained in the Gateway to College enrollment process. And I'm like, what? Now, I've been in education 30 years, and most of them have been alternative ed. I've worked in the mainstream. I was a high school counselor at Orono, so I, I've been all over the place. And I'm like, we're going to get these kids to come to the college campus three times. That's what um, Gateway to College says. We want them to come there for an information session. We want them to come back for testing and then come back for the interview. And I'm like, what? Three times? This is Minnesota. We don't have transportation like Portland, um, which is great. You can get anywhere quickly, too. So Rose and I decided to take it from three sessions to two sessions. And so our students come on a Monday from 3 to 4.30 and they attend an information session. Um, during that information session, they hear a presentation about the program. They get to meet myself and the resource specialist. They can ask some questions, take a tour. And they also take then a reading test. And it's Gateway to College's reading test. It's a quick and dirty reading test that determines if they have an eighth grade reading level or above. The next morning we score it, we call them back and say, you are invited to the next step. The next step is the AccuPlacer. So we decided made some changes last May and now we require all students entering our program to take the AccuPlacer. Before we had them be accepted into our program, we did some additional testing and then they would take the AccuPlacer. We now make it a part of the requirement. So they come to the college campus, we let them um, prepare ahead of time if they want. We send them a, a link to a prep test and they take the AccuPlacer. And then when they're done, they come back to the resource specialist or myself and we explain what the, uh, their scores mean. And we look and tell them this is what college level and college ready is and this is where you're at. And this is what our program can help you do to get there. Um, but it's a little bit of a reality for our students, um, which is an okay reality because it's what they need to do to be able to take college classes. Once um, they have taken the AccuPlacer, they've completed the application, which is a lengthy application, including three essays. So they have three essays they have to write. We also do an interview, and then once they've completed everything, we review, review their transcript, we determine if they're accepted or not accepted. Um, if they're accepted, we let the students start immediately. And I won't get into those details about how we're able to do that, but we start kids every single week, um, so we start them immediately. If they're not accepted, Gateway to College, along with my own philosophy in 287s, is that we want to make sure that we help that student find that next step. So if a student is not accepting the program, I'm aware of a lot of the area learning centers, I'm aware of our own in 287 and outside, um, also talking with the counselor if they can go back to their school and help them find that next spot for them. We also welcome, to welcome them back to reapply if they increase their reading score, if that was one of the reasons why they were not accepted. A little bit about just our rec um, student success and recognizing um, the achievements that they've made, as they talked about this morning. Um, at the end of first quarter, we have all staff write on a certificate, just things that they have um, really like about the student and what they've done that first quarter. At the end of uh, first semester, when we do our grades, we have A, B, honor roll, and also attendance. 
Uh, so we celebrate those successes and then here's some pictures from our graduation. I think the other thing, I, let me add in this morning when we were listening to the presentation about the college tree, I was thinking that mm -hmm. is also something we could do. Is this institute something like that as well? We did college pennants, or students have done pennants about what their goals are and things like that, but I did like the college tree idea behind that. This is our first group. This was our AM group, our morning group that we started with a year ago. Um, and I'm still very connected. Some of those students are in our second year of a program. Some have graduated and have come back and presented to um, St. Paul when they started their program. Some of the challenges, um, and, and there are a few. Transportation, I would say, is our biggest one. It is really hard trying to get students to come to a program when there is no transportation for them. Um, that they either um, skateboard, or longboard I guess it's called, um, a little hard today. Um, they may get rides with a parent, which doesn't happen very often. They usually end up taking several buses to get to our program. They have to end up going to the Brooklyn Center Transit, and then they have to come to the Hennepin Technical College campus. Um, and then we have a few students that do drive. That is one of the uh, big things. Also this year, as I mentioned, the mental health and some chemical health issues um, have come up. And so we support our students. Um, I am, feel very strongly on keeping our environment chemical free and my students know that. So if there's any suspicion of anything, I deal with it right away. Um, and I'm not okay that if any of that happens because we've got students who have gone through treatment who I personally recruited from a uh, school that closed, a sober school, and that I think that we want to make sure that we protect that environment for those students who are trying to stay off chemicals. Also some living arrangements. We've had many students who are homeless and, and trying to get them to school and trying to get them to see school as a priority when they don't even have a place to live. I think getting staff time to work with other college departments and getting to know the different professors I would say navigating the MinSKU and HTC systems have about put me over the edge to a certain extent. After 30 years and most of them in alternative education, um, knowing that this is a rule and this is how it is and there's no movement to it and this is when it has to be done, that is something that's really hard for me to, to understand and to help my students understand this is the way it is. Um, but that's part of that transition. We are a transition program. Even though they're in college classes, we're supporting them in that, during that transition. Also balancing three funding sources, which is a great thing to have. Um, Gateway to College National Network has supported us through a grant, a startup grant, um, and then Hennepin Tech and then 287, but you have three different budgets and three different things to work with. That's always been interesting. And then the, our program has grown, which is very exciting. We want to grow a little bit more, but um, it has been growing, and so just with the growing pains, some of the different issues that come up with that. And after last year, which was our, <coughs> our first year, at the end of the year, we had 61 students enrolled from 15 different high schools. And as an intermediate district, we have our 12 member districts, but also as an area learning center then, which is how we're set up, we will take students from, from any district whatsoever. Uh, last year, we did not have any, dis any disciplinary problems. And I think what I'm, I'm really proud of, and I think this speaks highly for our program, is 96% of the students returned this fall, and we did not have summer school. Fortunately, Anne was able to keep in contact with a, with a lot of the students. Last uh, May, June, we had eight students graduate, and totally our students earned 96 college credits. So those credits could have been in uh, computer class, HTML, college success, uh, introduction to sociology, uh, psychology, uh, or a variety of different classes. So out of our graduates, we have two attending Hennepin Technical College. As I mentioned, Hennepin Tech supports the students going wherever they want. And as a former high school counselor, I'm not going to gear them towards anything except what they want and where, they, where I feel they'll be successful. Montana State, Vermilion Boundary Waters College, St. Cloud State, Southwest Technical College, and Century College. This is last year's um, enrollment, and we are this year's fall's enrollment, where we have students from a variety of uh, school districts, which is really neat. I like having them from a lot of different school districts. They create new friendships and new partnerships. So we are one of two in the state of Minnesota. St. Paul just started their program a couple weeks ago, which we're very excited to have another partner in the state of Minnesota. Hopefully we'll have a lot more as part of the Gateway to College National Network. There are five essential elements that Gateway to College really wants you to have, and those are kind of like what I consider to be best practices. Um, innovative teaching and learning, uh, which we, as I mentioned, we use a lot of the AVID strategies. Uh, sustainable partnerships. So right now we have three funding sources, and how do we look elsewhere for other funding um, ways to sustain our partnership? 
significant dual credit, we're on our way there. Holistic student support um, with the social worker and the um, resource specialist, and then intentional collaboration. We have a short little video. I'm hoping that it works this time. It worked a little bit last time. I think one of the things, if you think about preparing our youth for college and or career readiness, this is one of the programs that really helps the students get ready for college. As Ann mentioned, it's somewhat of a transition program. It gets them in that college environment. Okay. Good, go ahead. To what I like <coughs> doing out of college. And that really appealed to me in a lot of ways. In 2013, I was, when, I, um, when it was time to graduate from high school, I was down seven credits. And, and my counselor told me, that I was I was I was gonna be unable to walk with my friends at graduation, and I was I was really really sad about the whole situation. But she gave me two choices: she gave me the OLC or Gateway to College, and the Gateway to College stood out to me the most because in a in a brochure it told me I was gonna have some college experience. All I can really say is that they're helpful and they're flexible with me is nice. The, the college, being in it makes you, you know, feel like you've done something. Uh, there's a ton more freedom. Like, you're not going to get scolded for taking your phone out of class or going to get a drink, but it's up to you to choose the appropriate times and stuff. stuff and, like, you'll realize how much time management is really important. First came to Gateway College, I was, <coughs> I, I, I was ambitious because I wanted to get my high school diploma done. I was, I was also afraid. I've had like certain medical things that stopped me from coming and certain things with daycare that stopped me. Um, coming every day and they've been very, very flexible with me and helped me like get work to do outside the school to complete my credits. The staff at the in the gateway program really help you make a plan and they do everything in their power to just push pull and just of you through in the right direction and um, but it's not it's not really like forceful either it's like they make you want to so gateway has uh, prepared me it pretty much kick started my thinking of the future and preparation. I earned three credits in college success and college success was my favorite favorite class at Gateway because we just don't we don't learn math English. We learn life lessons like persevering goals and believing in yourself and, and accomplishing your goals and setting goals. And, and, and. I took college success and it, it, it helps me with knowing what I'm getting into for next year. I plan on going to South Central College in Mankato and I plan on studying in social science and next you know, huh? I plan to apply to a two-year college and then continue after that for my four-year I'm going to stop it here. Um.